Hi, everybody. It's still March 21, 2019. I just want to pass along some information to you. I'm sure you all know about the cyclone that hit Mozambique, Zimbabwe. It's not good. I saw articles where they were saying the death toll was over a thousand, but now apparently it's down to 550. And they've lost virtually everything. Everything. Very rare for a cyclone to hit Mozambique. Interesting that it did, right? So much destruction is happening all over the world. Australia, you've got two cyclones coming, Trevor and Veronica brace for massive cyclones and massive flooding. Two severe tropical cyclones are brewing in Australia at the same time in Western Australia and the Northern Territory, creating a synchronistic and destructive weather event. Not seen since Marsha and Lamb cyclones in 2015. It's Category 5. It's a Category 4 now. Veronica, it will be a Category 5 on Saturday before weakening sometime on Sunday. Trevor is expected to reach a Category 4. A year's worth of rain. It will bring a year's worth of rain. And the winds, uh, 240 kilometers 100 kilometers gale force winds. It's the Pil Pilbara coast. Oh God, I hope you guys are okay. 2,000 residents have already evacuated in the path of Cyclone Trevor. Interesting that you have two hitting Australia. And they are forecasted to bring a whole lot of flooding. Florida, um, why do you have many areas that are marked very high for fires? Is it dry in these areas? I don't get it. I'll, uh, this is March 21. This is the uh, forecast for fire danger for March 21. And look at March 22. Wow. Okay. So all of this very low area down here turns into moderate. Why? What, what changed in a day? I always find these maps very interesting. Okay, I was sent this uh, two articles and I posted a video. I spent an awful lot of time looking for it. I spent, uh, I, I posted a video on the Army Corps of Engineers, they being sued for their decision to blow the levees on the Missouri or the Mississippi. Well, I can't even remember. I think it was the Mississippi that flooded out Missouri. Prime farmland. They literally flooded out so bad that farmers that had homes in their families for generations had farmed that land for generations and then FEMA came in, George Soros came in, buying up those properties for pennies on a dollar because the flood was so bad that they would not be able to farm for years. The Army Corps of Engineers were sued by two governors, Governor of Missouri and Sorry, I can't remember the other one. Because they made the decision to blow these levees to save a, to save a small, impoverished town in Cairo. 
Illinois. Now, the video that I posted, I was showing you pictures of Cairo and showing pictures of Missouri before and after the flood. It made no sense whatsoever that they were saving this very, very small, impoverished uh, town that was filled with a lot of vacant, uh, torn down, um, dilapidated buildings. It was deliberate to destroy the farmland. If people are not getting that at this point, I don't know what to tell you. I, it's really remarkable. So I was sent these articles and this is very, very important here. Hundreds of landowners sue Army Corps of Engineers over flooding. This was March 6, 2019. All right, the past five years, Ricky Walden has had to deal with his land flooding, and he's not alone. Hundreds of landowners in West Kentucky and Southern Illinois are suing the Army Corps of Engineers because of structures called wing dams. Wing dams are installed in rivers to control water flow and help with navigation. Over the past 20 years, the Corps has installed several wing dams in the Mississippi and Ohio rivers, which Walden claims is causing his land to flood more often and more severely. It's getting destroyed. In the last 10 years, there may have been four or five 100-year floods. And this is the attorney for this case. He's representing hundreds of landowners, like Walden, who are suing the Corps to pay for the damage to their land and homes. Uh, federal government needs to compensate for taking private land. Um, why is the Army Corps of engineers doing this. I believe it is to flood these farmers out. There's another article which was posted March 29, 2018. Landowners win lawsuit against U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers get sued a lot. Now, I posted videos also showing you, our federal agencies, are working for the United Nations implementing Agenda 2030 along with Army Corps of Engineers. Um, federal judge in Washington, D.C. ruled March 13 that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers bears responsibility for causing recurrent flooding and damaging farms and property in four states along the Missouri. Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas. Why am I bringing this up? Look at the flooding that is taking place right now. The ruling states that the government must compensate farmers, landowners, business owners for the flood damage, which has been estimated to be about, well, exceeding 300 million. Um, there were 373 plaintiffs comprised of farmers, landowners, business owners. It's a mass action lawsuit. It was a mass black, um, action lawsuit. It was originally filed March 5, 2014. It alleged that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers actions have violated the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment that bars the government from taking private property without just compensation. The court found that the Corps deprioritized um, flood control in 2004. Evidence established that the Corps changes to the river had the effect of raising the Missouri River's water surface elevations in periods of high flows. Uh, the judge found that since 2007, the flooding has been among the worst in the history of the river, and the core changes in the management of the river caused or contributed to the flooding. 
the court acknowledged that recurrent flooding in the Missouri River, River Basin will continue into the future, and that increased blocked drainage of farmlands due to higher river levels is a problem. The critical shift in the management of the river by the Corps in 2004 to restore its ecosystem and benefit and create habitat for threatened and endangered species. Get this now. Our federal government does not care about wildlife, endangered species. They use that for their agenda. They did this to create the flooding. And look at the flooding now. The court found that the notching of dikes and revetments, as well as the reopening of the historic chutes, which allows the river to meander and erode the bank, created potential flood impacts. These changes to the river, coupled with increased reservoir storage and threatened and endangered species releases from the dams during high river stages below the dams, served to cause or contribute to cause flooding in 2007, 8, 10, 13, 14, and since. Okay? So, what are we looking at? A tremendous amount of flooding of farmers who have already, prior to the flooding, have been um, filing for bankruptcy, debt climbing, tariffs, Trump tariffs hurt them. Uh, Kentucky, Montana, Florida operators at Farm AIDS Hotline have seen a doubling of contacts from for everything from financial counseling to crisis assistance. In Wisconsin, monthly forums in the basement of a church following the suicide of a fellow parishioner, a farmer who'd fallen on hard times. In Minnesota, rural counselor Ted Matthews says he's getting more and more calls. Can you imagine doing your job and having your boss say, well, you know things are bad this year, so not only are we not going to pay you, but you owe us. That's what has happened to farmers. You can read this. Um, it is truly heartbreaking that these farmers are being brought to their knees and, yes, killing themselves. Wisconsin lost almost 1,200 dairy farms between 2016 and 2018. And of course, the smaller operators are the most affected. And they put a mental health provision in the farm bill. They put a mental health provision in a farm bill, which means that these bills being passed by legislators are representatives in Congress, they know, they know what's happening to these farmers. Missouri governor declare a state of emergency amid severe flooding. And severe flooding it is. By the way, did you know that the Midwestern flooding isn't a natural disaster? Floods and hurricanes happen. The hazard itself is not the disaster, it's our habits and building codes. Right smack in your face, Agenda 2030. It's our habits and our building codes. It's not the Army Corps of Engineers. It's not weather modification or geoengineering. It's habits and building codes. Look at this. This is Missouri. The whole town's flooded. It's the worst I've ever seen it. Um, all the old timers talk about 93. I was just a little kid then, but I don't know what that was like, but that's, from what I've heard, it's definitely way worse than that. 
all the people in town and all the surrounding communities. I mean, I couldn't, everyone rushed in to help. It was really awesome. They held it off for close to two days, but it was just, it was more than everyone could handle and the water just finally broke in. My brother and I went into town to uh, set some of my mother's stuff up in her house that uh, we're a little unprepared. The water came faster than expected, so it's a two-story house. We hauled some of it upstairs and the rest of it we set on cement blocks try to get it above the flood water. Two to four feet and it's quickly rising. We were in there for two to three hours and it rose, I'm guessing, five inches just in the time we were there. It's, it's a shame. I mean, it's a it's a small community. It's a farming community. It's declining and I'm just afraid that this might... I, I hope we can recover. I don't know if it'll recover from this or not. It's just, it's devastating. Well, we had a levee breach this morning and started filling in Craig from the north side and so we've been standing by to make sure that the residents get out today and make sure that we're just taking care of everybody that's trying to work. Last time I was in there water was was pretty much in every street and was coming in at a pretty good rate and filling up the, the streets. That's where we've been filling sandbags the last three or four days and it's underwater now where we've been filling the sandbags. As of the It's bad. All right. It's really bad. Levees seem to be, oh, they're just breaking levees. Your Army Corps of Engineers, your taxes go to maintaining infrastructure. And you pay through the roof while this infrastructure just keeps just keeps being destroyed. Uh, the infrastructure's not protecting you. We've been sandbagging. We've been hauling sand. We've been hauling dirt. We're trying to keep levees sheared up so that we can, so water will stay out of here. Okay, what's going on uh, down the south? We have a mandatory evacuation but it's only volunteer mandatory, <laughs> however that works. And some people have already left, and we've got, right now, I think about 27 people that plan on staying till we can't stay anymore. I mean, to me, this is a big disaster. This should be a disaster declared. Well, this is my hometown, been here most of my life. I mean, if we can save it through this disaster, it'd be a miracle, but that's what we're trying to do is to save the town. It is a small community of about 250 people, and it seems like we all don't get along until you have a disaster like this. Outside communities have really stepped up and helped us a lot rescued people in Harvey and also the last three hurricanes this past season, Gordon, Florence and Michael. We came up on a assignment here with the OEM to be on standby for St. Joe for any uh, possible flooding that's going to happen here coming out of Nebraska. We go wherever the, uh, the first responders need us. Uh, we go into neighborhoods that are flooded. We rescue, you know, pull the people out of the neighborhoods, bring them to safety. So we're just here, like I said, to assist, and uh, we do boat rescues for the most part. And then, of course, we have other groups that come in and help with uh, supplies and stuff like that. Missouri. They're destroying. They're destroying so much of the small independent farmers. And no, a lot of these people will not be able to recover. Here. The floods are getting worse a week after that disaster started to unfold. A new levee breach yesterday on the Missouri River forced the evacuation of the entire town of Craig, Missouri, in just hours. Officials now estimate the cost of the flooding in four states to be in the billions of dollars. In Iowa, 
The governor said she is going to ask President Trump to quickly announce a disaster declaration to help with recovery efforts. Don Daler is in flooded Hamburg, Iowa, which is several miles from the Missouri River. Don, what's it look like this morning? Yeah, good morning. Well, as you can see, it's wet. This is actually Main Street. The water gets a lot deeper the further you go in that direction. But of course, it's never a good idea to go wandering around flooded streets. And I have to tell you, it is really eerie seeing those street lights stretch all the way into the distance. As we take an overhead look, I'll tell you, this much of this is from the Missouri River, which came rushing in here when suddenly hundreds of miles of levees were breached. And within a matter of minutes, Hamburg became a town submerged. In Hamburg, Iowa, nothing was spared. The homes and businesses of the nearly 1,200 people who live here were totally submerged. There's no place for the water to go. Major General Scott Spellman and his team from the Army Corps of Engineers assessed the devastation from above. You signed up to protect people, to help people. So how does this affect you personally to see this town underwater? You're dealing with uh, people and communities that are having uh, really the worst day of their lives and we understand them. So why is it with the lawsuits against the Army Corps of Engineers and these levees busting out all over year after year after year are you going this guy isn't going to be asked that question right we're not going to ask that question. What is the Army Corps of Engineers doing that they can't seem to have these levees um, maintain when there's flooding? I mean, I've heard from many in this area that the rain they know that the rain was not enough to produce this kind of flooding. All right, we know that this is going on. Do you know, look at, look at this town. We're really living this year after year after year. And we understand the frustration. We want to do everything we can within our authorities as fast as we can to help. Look at this friggin', no, I'm not gonna curse. He's smiling, smiling. He's comfortable. My God. Help them. As we rode through Main Street, it was only passable by boat. Hamburg built a secondary levee before a major flood in 2011. It kept this area dry. The problem is the Army Corps of Engineers asked them to lower it to five feet high to meet federal regulations. Did you hear that? Man, I, <laughs> it's too bad that we weren't able to stay, you know, a constitutional republic where the states had more power than the federal government. Because, you know, the smaller you are, the more control and power you have. That's why the uh, centralization of all power in Washington, D.C. was critical to uh, creating a totalitarian nation on steroids. And that's what we have. And this flood was nine feet. It just rolled in. Kathy Crane has been the town's mayor for 12 years. This is a tough community. We're little and we're not wealthy. We are not wealthy. How are you going to rebound from this? We're asking for help. We want to keep our businesses here. We want to keep our homes. We want to keep our citizens. There are people. They're, we've known them all our lives. We have noticed the water has been slowly receding. I wouldn't be able to be standing here two days ago, but the residents are really concerned that with those levees basically destroyed, the town might be susceptible to even more flooding in the coming months. Yana. Don, there are so many people. Guess what? <laughs> they have forecasted 
right to summer. How do they do that? How? Okay. They can't forecast into the summer what the weather is going to be. But somehow they've managed to do it. 25 states are at risk of serious flooding. This spring, right into summer, two-thirds of the lower 48 states will have an elevated risk of some flooding. From now until May, 25 states could experience major or moderate flooding. The flooding this year could be worse than anything we've seen in recent years, even worse than the historic floods of 93 and 2011. Here's your spring flood outlook. And all of these states in color, flooding. The uh, mustard colored, minor. The orange, moderate. Purple, major. They're going to bring fires and floods a whole lot this year. It's almost like they've decided that they really need now to start implementing uh, the physical reshaping of this country, though it's been going on for many, many years, but they're, they're accelerating uh, the use of all of these methods and you know any American should be questioning how the hell can they be forecasting forecasting fires in Oregon throughout you know 2019 and forecasting flooding up until May up until May but of course it's climate change. Current flooding in the Missouri River Basin and beyond has been caused in part by heavy rains but also complicated by frozen snow, uh, frozen ground. No, sorry. Heavy rains, you didn't get the kind of heavy rains that would have caused this flooding. The Army Corps of Engineers once again, just like it did at Harvey, okay, Texas, I had a subscriber. She would never have had her home flooded had it not been for the Army Corps of Engineers that released the reservoirs. Reservoirs that flooded out thousands of homes. They do it purposely. These levees... No, I'm sorry. This is purposeful. Heavier rainfall events are among the most common conditions associated with climate change. Humans have loaded so much planet warming carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that the starting assumption has to be that climate change is affecting everything to some extent. And we all know that the IPCC is a complete and utter fraud. Um, oh my God, they, could, they, they just keep speaking these lies. And it does make me sick to my stomach every time I read climate change, climate change. When it's geoengineering, weather modification, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, it's not habit and building codes. It's, my God, could... Well, look, we've gone through this so often that if Americans didn't wake up, how many times before this happened? Iowa, by the way, Iowa is, there's so much flooding in Iowa. And only eight months ago, Iowa, I mean, it's been going on and on and on. These areas are hit repeatedly, like Houston, like uh, Louisiana like the fires in California. You know, they, they're hitting areas purposefully, repeatedly. And when these flood waters recede and the farmers look around and they realize 
we're not going to be able to farm for a couple of years. We're already in debt. They sell pennies on the dollar. FEMA scoops up the property. FEMA has bought out whole towns. I hate that they're so successful. All links are below.